Ashes lay in drifts about the ruined splendor of the sanctum, mounted against the altar and about the feet of my divine ancestor, triumphant beneath the oculus far above. I wore no helmet then and heard with my naked ears the roar of engines approaching. I felt the dead wind in my hair and smelled the foul burning of the ashes of men. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Patekir. So it is time, it is time to review the fifth book in the Sun Eater series. I am finally caught up uh, with the Sun Eater series now, with the main books in the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. And with the completion of Ashes of Man, I am increasingly confident in crowning the Sun Eater series as the best sci-fi series that I have ever read. Pass. The past is written, simple words with terrifying effects. And our lives are filled with so many beginnings and so many endings. As you hear me speak these words, they are already a part of your past. They are all irreversible. Just like all the good and bad things in our past. Hadrian understand this truth through the cruelest roads in Kingdoms of Death. And you would be mistaken if you think he will get a rest in Ashes of Man, the fifth book in the Sun Eater series. Ashes of Man is also the second half of Kingdoms of Death, originally intended to be one book long. But now it is the fourth book in the series. Obviously, I don't have the power of the quiet and I wouldn't know how that one big book without the division would have turned out. But as it stands out, I am actually glad Kingdoms of Death and Ashes of Man are two separate books. Even though the story between the two books seamlessly continue from one to another without huge time jumps like usual, Kingdoms of Death ends in a fitting and satisfying place. Ashes of Man begins with the various effects the cataclysmic events in Kingdoms of Death have caused to Hadrian and the Solan Empire. And if there is one thing we can be 100% sure about our lives, the stream of time leaves no one unscarred. To understand that my review for Ashes of Man will be shorter than my usual Sanita reviews to avoid spoilers. This is the fifth book of the series now. I have mentioned the greatness of Ruokyo's storytelling and writing in my previous reviews. And even though I know I will submit to repeat my praise, I would like to focus this spoiler-free review on the highlights of the novel and the three key characters in it that made Ashes of Man receive another incredibly positive rating from me. Other than Hadrian and the characters that appeared in the cover art of the Sun Eater post Ashes of Man, this means that other than Hadrian Marlowe, Valka Ondera, Lorian Aristides, and a few new characters' names like Sir Hector Silva and Prince Kaim, to avoid spoilers, the other characters' names will barely be mentioned in this review. I will begin with Hadrian Marlowe, the Sun Eater himself. Hadrian is old. He is 384 years old now in Ashes of Men, and thanks to him being a paladin and the constant usage of few, it has been almost a thousand years since he was born. And he is no longer as strong as he was in Howling Dark and Demon in White. The overwhelming events in Kingdoms of Death have changed and weakened him. I might have mentioned this before, but Hadrian Marlowe is one of my favorite characters in speculative fiction. If not before, then it is now. His passion, fear, rage, and grief felt so palpable to me. As I said before, I do not always agree with Hadrian's actions, but through context, background, and well-written motivations, I understood his actions. His oath and responsibilities hung like a circle of chains around his neck on his journey. He cannot escape it, no matter how hard he tries. And the tragedy inflicted by the ugliness of the world never ceases to stop for him. One of the things I appreciate most, even if it resulted in a slower and more contemplative pacing about Ashes of Man, is how the sense of guilt, sorrow, and regret over the harrowing years in Kingdoms of Death is reflected over and over again. The memories are permanently stamped in Hadrian's mind. This is super important to me. Something as traumatic as the ones in Kingdoms of Death should never be easily forgotten by the character. It would not feel realistic. The horrors of the Selsin were too insane to dismiss. I love reading about Hadrian's character development and attempt to recover physically and mentally. He would have failed at abating his sadness without the love and loyalty of his remaining friends and Valka Ondera, one of the central figures in the Sun Eater series. Every cover art in the Sun Eater series, on top of being some of the best cover art in the science fiction genre, consistently has a reason why the chosen characters earn the spotlight in the cover art. There are many good and valid reasons why Valka Ondera is the character on the front cover of Ashes of Men. The relationship and journey between Hadrian Marlowe and Valka have always been evident in each book in the Sun Eater series, and it is even more so in Ashes of Men. And it is hard not to like Valka. 
centuries of adventures and companionship through thick and thin have passed since their encounter in Empire of Silence. Even though the story is dramatically narrated from the sole perspective of Hadrian, Valka is essentially the second main character of the Sun Eater. And with that in mind, it's not only Hadrian who has gone through substantial character development but Valka as well. She still retains her personality but she too has learned a lot about the world, the Solon Empire, the Anna Ryok, and Selsin. In return, she too has developed into a better person. Without giving any spoilers, I highly enjoyed reading her story and the relationship between her and Hadrian. Ashes of Man is, in a way, her book. Of course, as I said, Valka is not the only one responsible for keeping Hadrian sane. In his journey, Hadrian has earned the loyalty of his band Red Company. And in Ashes of Man, Lorian Aristides exhibited a powerful display of unwavering loyalty to him. Lorian the Mistborn, Lorian the Good Commander. Lorian has always been one of my favorite characters ever since his first appearance in Demon in White. And Ashes of Man has practically turned him into my second favorite character in the series. Just slightly below Hadrian Marlowe. And who knows, this ranking might change after I read uh, The Drags of Empire. Hadrian will have a tough competition as the champion of my heart in the series. Not only against Lorian but other characters too. This is an intricate galaxy-spanning space opera series. We have ventured into multiple planets with their own distinct culture and settings. And it is not a surprise this magnificent and ambitious series is filled with many memorable characters. The crew of the Red Company, Basander Lin, Olorin Milta, the Emperor, even the newly introduced Sir Hector Silva, who reminded Hadrian and me of young Hadrian himself, and more. The list goes on. But Lorian Aristides is definitely in the runner-up spot for now. I love reading characters like him. He is a character reminiscent of Tyrion Lannister from A Song of Ice and Fire and Sandan Glokta from the First Law series. And as Lorian laid his emotions bare to Hadrian here and vice versa, I can't even begin to explain how much I grew to care about him. If you have read this book, when Lorian said, My lord, I never left it, it it was an emotional damage to me, in a good way. I am not only excited to read uh, Disquiet Gods, the sixth book in the series, but also uh, The Dregs of Empire, the companion novel to the Sanita series which will focus on Lorian Aristides. It goes without saying that there are other characters that became a positive factor in this review, such as Prince Kaim, but this is a spoiler-free review. I want readers who stumble upon this review to be able to experience uh, Ashes of Man to the fullest without me giving up key events. I can, however, say that in Ashes of Man, we finally learn more about the Jadians. I don't know about you, but since Olorin Milta's display of prowess and skill as a Maes Kolos in Empire of Silence, I have always been eager to learn more about the Jadians. I finally got what I wanted here, and maybe more in the next book. The Jadians are now involved in Hadrian's story. There is no book in the Sanita series that felt wasted. Readers are supplied with something new that increase our immersion in the world or universe that Rokio crafted. I won't trace back the details of what we have ripped from all the books in the series. But if in Kingdoms of Death we learn the most about the Selsin, we get to read more about the Solon Empire, Jadians, Merikani, Monumentals, Watchers, The Firstborn, and Vayar II in Ashes of Men. Chapter 17 in particular was a chapter of heavy lore that I must visit again someday. Rokio made sure everything matters in this battle of darkness and light, and every step, every decision, and every action led Hadrian to the life-changing battle of Perfugium. As repetitive as this sounds, Rokio's prose continue to impress me. Hadrian's narration is simply one of the most distinct and compelling storytelling I've ever read in speculative fiction. There were some subtle insertions of Hadrian's current thoughts and feelings in the present time frame. The one who wrote the tale of Hadrian in the chronicle we are reading toward his own past. It was utterly brilliant and poignant. It is true, Ashes of Man is not a novel as relentlessly grim and devastating as Kingdoms of Death. But if you approach Ashes of Man thinking it won't leave you emotionally scarred, you would be making a mistake. The narrative in Ashes of Man takes time to build toward the climatic concluding sequence. 
there was a short chapter in the book titled The Call. This is the calm before the storm moment, the calmness before perfume, the tranquility before the chaos seeds of foreshadowing planted in howling dark bloom into fruition. The piece before I read a violent chapter I haven't ever witnessed in any other storytelling medium, and yet that chapter somehow managed to deliver one of the most beautiful moments in the series in harmony. It's impeccable, darkness and light, despair and hope, hatred and love, Selsin and humanity. They constantly vie for dominance in the narrative of Ashes of Men. This is why it is so challenging to encapsulate everything that occurred in a single book of the Sun Eater series into one review. We need a term for Rokio's final chapters or sequence. If Sanderson has Sanderlands and John Gwynn has Guinedo, I named this myself, maybe we should apply Volcano to Rokio, the Volcano. Expect heart hammering and satisfying final chapters in each installment and you will get it. Rokio has constructed them with finesse. Future. Despite the carving of oppressive darkness into the skin and bone of Hadrian's past, the potential of greater light in the future is still colossal. If Empire of Silence up to Demon in White is to illustrate the rise and glories of Hadrian Marlowe and the Red Company, Kingdoms of Death and Ashes of Man exist to show the blackest days and grievous chapters of Hadrian's life. The parchments of the Sun Eater are marked with melancholic and ashes of men. And similar to Hadrian, sometimes the worst wounds we suffered left no visible scar. There is so much darkness to defeat, but I believe the bright light we cannot see remains to be grasped. Ashes of Man is another excellent novel in the Sun Eater series. As an installment, I did not love this as much as the previous books, but it is still an amazing 4.5 out of 5 stars novel. The series overall so far is just staggeringly tremendous. If you are watching this review right now, I will assume you have heard me praise the available 5 books in the series so far in lengthy consideration. However, my praises won't capture the full grandeur of the series. You have to read and experience reading them yourself. For me, right now, we know how Hadrian's story ends. But there are still details of his chronicle to consume. I am saddened to have caught up with the published books in the series. But I am also brimming with delight at the thought of reading the upcoming Disquiet Gods. Before that, the Dregs of Empire awaits me. I shall go on to Disquiet Gods after I finish reading uh, the Dregs of Empire. And this time, I will not be alone but together with my fellow Red Company readers. And I think that's really pretty much all I can say about Ashes of Man without giving any spoilers. I really love the series. As I said, this has become my favorite sci-fi series of all time um, right now. And I am really looking forward to reading uh, Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 3, The Dregs of Empire, and then Disquiet Gods. I am really, really close uh, to catching up with all the available books, not only the main novels, but really every book in the series. And I feel bittersweet about that, but of course, I must do it. This must be. And yeah, I think that's really pretty much it uh, from me. If you have read the series up to Ashes of Man, do let me know which book is your favorite in the series and which one is your least favorite. Although I do think that all of them are amazing. And yeah, that's really it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.